Hi and welcome to Priori Digital Studio tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to set up and use your moving planner spreadsheet in the most efficient way. In this video, I am using Google Sheets, but the Excel version is exactly the same. First thing, we protect most of the cells where there are formulas to make sure that you don't erase any important formulas that could impact the spreadsheet. So if you see this message, it means you are not supposed to touch it. But don't worry, I'll show you step by step how to prepare your spreadsheet. In this situation, simply click on the X and you will be fine. Moreover, we established a color code to show you which cells can be edited and which one cannot. So basically, you can edit the cells that have a white background. Another small warning, please don't move a cell from one place to another. If you do move a cell, it could generate an issue by messing up the automation of the spreadsheet. The best way to avoid these errors is to copy and paste your data. So now let's take a look at the setup tab. Within this tab, you'll find multiple tables that are essential to populate your data in the following tabs. So first, you need to fill in your old and new address. Then, there's a specific area to define your currency. You simply have to write your currency symbol, or if you don't have a symbol, it could be the three letters of your currency. And then, next to it, you need to enter your moving date. If you are in Google Sheets, you can simply double-click on the cell and a small calendar will appear. You can then select your date. However, in Excel, this feature does not exist, so you will have to type in the date. After that, there's three tables to populate some drop-down menus in the following tabs. In these tables, you can define people in charge for your tasks, room in the house, like kitchen and bedroom, for example, and task statuses. So don't worry, if you forget to enter information in one of these tables, you can still come back to the tab and add more data if needed. So for now, let's skip the dashboard. We'll come back at the end when we already overviewed the whole spreadsheet. So now let's explore the calendar tab. This tab is designed to be very intuitive, requiring min minimal data input or changes. Uh, it serves as a calendar to help you forecast future deadlines. To begin using this tab, enter the year and then select the month you wish to visualize using the drop-down menu. You can also choose the starting day of the week between Sunday and Monday. Once selected, the entire calendar for the choosing month will be displayed. It's important to note that this tab is linked with three other tabs, the Moving Timeline tab, the Task Tracker tab, as well as the Moving Budget tab, allowing for the display of data from those tabs. We will cover these three tabs later in the video. On the left side of the calendar, you can add punctual deadlines by entering a description, the due date, and once the information is entered, simply check the checkbox to mark the task as complete. As you can see here, uh, when we entered call mark in the punctual deadline for the 10th of June, we can also see it on the calendar. As you can see, as soon as we tick the checkbox, it's straight through in the punctual deadline table and also marked in green within the calendar. We also added two different filter features for you. In the first one, you can select to show the task done, left to do, and all the tasks. In the second filter feature, you can select if you want to see your data from your budget, the timeline tab, the task tracker, and or the punctual deadline. Simply tick the checkbox to visualize info from these tabs. So now let's take an example together. Let's say that we want to see our tasks coming up in the next few days. So simply select the view only and not done tasks. Then untick everything except the task tracker tab. And as you can see here, we have two coming ta tasks in the following days. Let's go to the task tracker tab and tick this uh, called the rental truck. So as you can see, it's in our task tracker tab. Let's say that we finish this task and we called it um, and tick it. As you can see, this will also change over our calendar. So this task was removed because it's in the not done task only. Now let's change it to view every done task and not done tasks. As you can see here, it reappears and it's in green marked as done. So be careful if you unselect everything, the calendar will not show any data and a warning will appear in this situation. So now let's explore the task tracker tab, which offers a user-friendly interface. So you simply need to input your task names and associated data, such as the description status, the priority, person in charge, and start and due date. The system automatically calculates the days left. You can also add progression to your tasks and add some notes if needed. 
Upon completing a task, you can mark it by checking the checkbox on the left side of the table, resulting in a strikethrough effect. At the top of the tab, you'll find the task statistics presented through two pie charts, one sorting task by status and the other illustrating distribution per person in charge. You will also find a bar chart with the task priority. Then you also have a summary of your overall task and task due today. If you want to see a specific task, we also added a highlight feature where you can highlight a specific task. So simply click on the drop down menu and select the task that you want to see. And as soon as you click on it, it will be highlighted in blue. On the right hand side of this table, you will be able to filter your tasks with a filter feature. So let's take an example on how we can easily filter our data. So in the filter completed task, let's use the drop down menu and click on the tasks that are done. Then in the status, let's also click on the drop down menu and click on to review. As you can see, we only have two tasks that are done and to be reviewed. Let's say that we want to see all our data again, then we can simply delete. So click on the cell and click on delete. And then as you can see, all your data will reappear again. So now let's explore the packing tracker tab designed to simplify your moving process. In this tab, each table represents a box you will move from your old address to your new address. Before packing a box, you can plan ahead by listing the items you intend to place in it. Once the box is packed, simply check off each item as packed. If an item is fragile, you can indicate that using the second checkbox. At the top of each box section, you can specify which room the box should go to at your new address, making the unpacking process more organized. After unpacking, you can mark each item as arrived to keep track of what's been successfully moved. The system automatically calculates your overall packing progress and displays it as a percentage. If any item in a box is marked as fragile, a warning will appear at the top of the table. You'll also see key details such as your old and new address and your move-in date at the top automatically pulls from the setup tab. We also added a few charts to help you oversee your packing. So you have the total number of items, your pack item, a fragile item, as well as arrive item. This is a good summary to see your progression. Then we also added a packing progress. And then the last chart is your packing progress over all your boxes. So now let's take a closer look at the moving budget tab. At the top, you'll find a budget dashboard that gives you a quick overview of your financial situation with four key figures. So the total budget, which is the total amount you have allocated to your move. Then this real spending, which is the total amount you've actually spent up to now. The left to spend, which is how much remains available based on your initial budget. And finally, use budget, which is displayed as a percentage. These numbers update automatically in real time as you log your expenses. Below the dashboard, you'll find two essential tools, the budget summary table and the transaction tracker. Start by entering your spending categories, such as moving companies, truck rentals, packing supplies, and so on, and assign a budget amount to each. This step defines your overall budget. Then the gray section of the budget summary table is fully automated and reflects your actual spending based on the data you input in the transaction tracker. To log your transactions, simply enter the due date if the payment is scheduled for later, and once it's paid, fill in the payment date, amount, and check the box to confirm the payment. Then select the appropriate category from the drop-down menu. You can also add a description if needed. If you'd like to quickly see all transactions related to a specific category, use the highlight features for an easy filtering. As you enter your data, both the budget summary and the pie chart at the top right corner will update automatically to give you a clear visual representation of your spending. So now let's take a look at the change of address tab. This tab helps you keep track of all the companies, association, and institution you need to notify about, about your change of address. To help you, we split the tab into seven main categories, personal and household, employment and financial, government and legal, subscription and membership, healthcare, transportation, and education. So simply tick each box when you've notified of that entity. For example, you can see at a glance which health insurers or subscription services still need updating. At the top, your old and new addresses are displayed for reference. 
A progress bar is also visible at the top of the tab. The system tracks your overall completion percentage and lets you easily identify remaining tasks, ensuring no important notifications are missed during your move. So now let's take a look at the service providers tab. In this tab, you can list all your service providers and choose the ones that best suit your needs. You have up to 20 different service providers type, each with its own dedicated table. 14 of them are predefined to help you cover all your bases, but you also have six additional tables to add more service providers if needed. For each service provider, you can enter their name, contact details like phone numbers and email, the service quoted and the amount quoted. There's also a space for any additional notes. So once you've made your selection, simply tick the checkbox next to the provider's name and the row will be highlighted in yellow. At the top of the page, you'll find a summary of all your service providers, including the estimated amount you plan to spend on each and their corresponding percentages. On the right side, two charts visually represent the distribution of service providers types. So finally, to make this tab easier to navigate, we added section and subsections with a convenient expand and collapse feature. For example, if you want to hide the home services section, simply click on the minus sign on the far left. As soon as you click, you will see this uh, pop-up message. This is the only time where you can click OK. Click on OK and you will be fine. So as you can see, the entire section will collapse out of view. To show the section again, simply click on the plus sign. Again, you will see this message and click on OK. You can also collapse or expand subsections within a large section using the same process, helping you keep your tab clean and focused. So now let's take a look at the contact information tab. So this tab will help you to stay organized and visualize all your service providers and important contacts at the same place. So in case of emergency during your moving day, simply open this tab and you will be able to contact the appropriate person. So the first table is for your other contacts that are not service providers. It could be your family or friends helping you to move. So you simply have to type in their name, their relationship with you, their contact info like their phone number, as well as their email address. The second table is for your service providers, and this table is totally automated based on the information previously filled in the service providers tab. The information displayed is only for the service providers you ticked the boxes. So the one that you basically decided to go with. So as you can see, you can have more than one natural gas provider, for example. Same thing for the rental trucks or internet. To help you uh, organize your tab, we also organize the service provider by their name in alphabetical order. So now let's take a look at the moving day schedule tab. So this tab helps you organize your moving day with a simple table showing four key columns, time, tasks, person in charge, and notes. So just enter each task schedule time, describe the activity like load large furniture or start unpacking the kitchen, select the responsible person from the drop-down menu and add any important reminders in the notes. This clear timeline ensures everyone knows their responsibilities, helping your moving day run smoothly without missing steps or confusion. All information can be easily edited as plans evolve. So now let's take a look at the moving timeline tab. This section helps you organize all tasks and deadlines leading up to your moving day, ensuring nothing gets overlooked. The tab is divided into six chronological tables, allowing you to enter tasks, assign person to each task, and set deadlines. Mark tasks as complete by ticking the checkbox, and the progress bar at the top of each table will automatically update. So now let's take an example together. Um, we can simply type in what we need to do. So let's say pack toys and then the person in charge is selected from the drop down menu. Let's say Liam and then simply double click if you're using Google Sheet to select a due date. And if you are in Excel, you will have to type in this information. So to help you structure your tasks, we also automatically calculated the time frame for each table. So, for example, in the table three months before your move, Based on your moving date, we know that three months before, it's starting March 29 and end on June 30th. 
So then finally, at the top of the tab, we also um, gave you some important information. So we have a summary of your moving timeline with all your total tasks left, complete tasks and pending tasks. We also added an overall progression as well as a task distribution separated by person in charge. So now let's take a look at the dashboard. The dashboard gives you a bird's eye view of your moving day. So right at the top, you will see where you're moving from, where you're moving to, as well as your moving day. We also added a summary of your moving timeline checklist and the overall progress of all your tasks. So then we added a task summary, which is all the information included in the task tracker. So in this section, you will see four charts. So representing your overall task completion, all your task by task status, the task priority, as well as the task distribution within all your person in charge. Then we also added a section for the packing summary. So you will see all the information that are from the packing tracker. So we also left the packing summary with the total number of item, your packed item, as well as your fragile item, item and arrived item. You have your packing progression and all your packing progress for each of your boxes. So then you'll find the moving budget section, which includes your total moving budget, how much you've spent so far, as well as where your money is going. And finally, the service provider section, it shows a breakdown of total amount by service and utility. And finally, the service provider section, it shows a breakdown of a total amount by service and utility. So that's it. I hope this tutorial helps you easily set up your spreadsheet. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Follow Prairie Digital Studio on YouTube for sneak peeks on our new templates.